from Teach Over the Rainbow and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a pencil door sign. When I put these on my social media I had a lot of questions on my techniques on how I made these and I was asked if I could do a step-by-step -step tutorial so here it is. Before I get started make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share it all the engagement helps. Everything that I'm going to be using today in this tutorial will be linked in the description so let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start off with our wooden 12 inch circle blank and then take two inch painter's tape and place it across the top. This is gonna be the pink portion of the eraser for the pencil door sign. The next thing you're going to do is take the inch and a half painter's tape. This is going to be the metal portion of your pencil. You can see these are two different sizes. You want your pink portion to be a little bit bigger. So go ahead and take your inch and a half painter's tape and place it right underneath the top portion of the painter's tape. Once you have that set in place, you can remove the pink portion because we're gonna spray paint that pink or you can paint it with acrylic paint. Either one is fine. Make sure that you fold over the painter's tape tightly on the sides because you're gonna to wanna to spray paint the sides too so that the sides are not wooden color. Now you're gonna use that same inch and a half painter's tape to place a guide along the bottom, which is going to be your black portion, the lead portion of your pencil door sign. This actually isn't gonna stay here. You're just gonna use this as a guide to know where you need to place the zigzag part of your pencil. We're not actually gonna paint this portion of the door sign because it's going to be a wooden color because this is the wooden part of the pencil that it is exposed. So you're gonna use your zigzag and you're gonna center it um, on the center of the circle so that your middle zigzag portion is right down the middle and you have even zigzags on the side, if that makes sense. And then go ahead and fold those over nice and tight so that you don't get any paint underneath that part because you want that part to stay brown. Now we have all of our tapes and guides in place. The top part is gonna be pink. Underneath the painter's tape is gonna be silver. That middle section is yellow. Underneath the zigzag is not gonna be painted and then the bottom will be painted black. Because I make so many at one time, I use spray paint instead of acrylic paint, just moves a lot faster. And in order to do that, I create like this little block with this cardstock so that I take two pieces of cardstock, I tape them together. And then when I go out and spray paint, I'm able to cover the sections that I don't want spray painted. And I'm gonna show you how I do that in just one second. These are the four colors that I use on my pencil. I absolutely love Color Shot. It dries super fast. I can touch my projects within minutes. So I have Farmer's Daughter, Emoji, Blackout, and Let's Get Cozy. All right, we've moved on to spray painting. If you are spray painting, you're gonna wanna use this cover to cover the portion of your door sign that you don't want spray painted. If you're just using acrylic paint and a paintbrush, you're not gonna need this paper covering. Make sure you're getting the outside edges of your door sign so that that portion doesn't stay wooden in color. So I just spray paint each one and move on to the next one, making sure, like I said, I'm getting the outside edge of the door sign. Now we're gonna move on to the black portion, which is the lead part of the door sign. So you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you, again, get that outside edge and spray, and then you can move on to the next one. We're gonna move on to spray painting this yellow section, this middle section of the pencil, but we need to cover up this pink and this black portion first. To do that, we're gonna use our two inch painter's tape and we're gonna perfectly line up that tape with the bottom part of our zigzag and make sure you fold it over so you don't get any overspray. It's important that you line it up perfectly with the bottom part of that zigzag because that's gonna double as a guide when we're going to put our glitter on and I'll show you what I mean about that in a little bit. So do the same thing with the two inch painter's tape, line it up perfectly with the existing piece of painter's tape that's already there and make sure you fold it underneath so that you don't get any overspray on the sides of your door sign. Now we're gonna start with the yellow part of our pencil. Make sure that you spray the outside edges so those are covered and not wood color. Get all of your edges and then just go through and go with a back and forth motion, short bursts, and these will dry within like five minutes. Color Shot is so amazing in terms of projects and your ability to work with them very quickly after you spray paint. 
Now, when applying your glitter, you can use two methods, either the Mod Podge or the UV Resin. I use UV Resin because I make so many door signs at one time, it just makes the process go a lot faster. I use the UV Resin from CCDIY and it's linked in the description. Now, in terms of colors of glitter, these are the colors that I use. These are peachy olive glitters. Um, I use a combination of Batman and 357, Ophelia for the brown, Diggory for the yellow, 357 Magnum for the silver portion of the pencil, and then finally Wednesdays for the pink eraser part. These are also linked in the description as well as a discount code for Peachy Olive Glitters and CC DIY. Now we're going to move on to the glittering portion of the sign. I'm going to glitter the pink eraser part of the sign first, so go ahead and peel off that top piece of tape so that you can glitter the pink section. If you're using Mod Podge, you're going to do the same thing basically that I'm doing with the UV resin. Of course, you're not going to put your Mod Podge under a UV light. You don't need a lot of UV resin to get the glitter to adhere, so just apply your UV resin or your Mod Podge and smooth it over the pink section and then you can apply your glitter. So just apply your glitter to the pink section, whether you're using Mod Podge or UV Resin, make sure you get a good coating and then tap off your excess. Pop your sign under your UV light so that it can cure it. This light is linked in the description as well and it's also in my Amazon store. Once your pink has cured, you're gonna wanna seal that glitter in so your pink doesn't mix with your silver, your silver doesn't mix with your yellow, and so on and so forth. Because once you start having glitter mix in with your other colors or you'll have a speck of black in your pink or a speck of silver in your pink, your sign starts to look pretty sloppy. So either you're gonna seal this in with Mod Podge or you're going to seal it in with UV resin. Again, I use the UV resin because it just moves so much faster for me. Put it back under your UV light to cure, and once it's cured, you can go ahead and peel off that tape. Um, if it starts to stick because of your UV resin or your Mod Podge, you can just use that little pizza cutter tool to remove it, just like I'm doing right here. And it will come right off, no problem. The last part we wanna glitter is the yellow portion because that is the lightest color and we don't want any of our other glitters to mix in with that. We want that the last color to be applied. So the next thing you're gonna do is remove that zigzag portion of the pencil that covered the wooden part of the pencil that will be exposed. And you're gonna take that and you're gonna flip it around and you're now gonna cover the yellow portion because we're gonna glitter the wooden part of our pencil. So take your zigzag portion, flip it upside down and now cover the yellow. It's okay if it's not 100% perfect because remember you're gonna have trim in between those sections so you can fix little boo-boos if it is not perfect and I'll show you what I mean later on in the video. So now that we've covered the zigzag portion of the yellow, you go ahead and apply your Mod Podge or your UV resin to the wooden portion of your door sign and go ahead and spread it and then you can apply your brown glitter for the wooden portion of the pencil. Tap off your excess and then you can put it under your UV light if you're using UV resin. Just like we sealed in the pink portion of glitter, we're gonna do the same thing with the brown because again, we don't want our glitters uh, escaping and going into the other portions of our glitter colors because then it's gonna look really sloppy. If you're using Mod Podge, you're gonna put another layer of Mod Podge once your glue dries over the brown glitter. If you're using UV resin, you're gonna put another coat of UV resin over that peel off the tape um, guides, and then you're gonna put it under the UV light. I'm gonna move on to glittering the black part of the door sign. So I wanna put a piece of guide tape down over the brown glitter so I don't get any black glitter on there because it will start looking sloppy. So apply your piece of guide tape, apply your resin or Mod Podge, and then apply your glitter. Tap off your excess and then put it under your UV light to cure. After that's cured, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you um, seal in this black. This black is the most important one to seal in because if that black gets in any of the other color glitters, you're gonna see it right away because it's so dark. So then you need to peel away your guide tape and put it under your UV light to cure. Now I'm gonna move on to the silver portion of the door sign. I'm gonna use two pieces of guide tape to cover the pink glitter that we've already put on and sealed. And then I'm gonna cover that yellow part that I don't wanna get any gray spray paint on. If you're using acrylic paint, just put your guide pieces on and paint your acrylic paint on that silver part. We moved on to spray painting the gray, and again, I'm using that cardstock so I can cover the other portions of the door sign that I don't want to get gray spray paint on. Once that's dry, you can use your UV resin to put on the gray portion and then add your silver glitter for that portion of the door sign. 
go ahead and tap off your excess and then put it under your UV light. Because this part is wide with my UV light, I kind of have to angle it and then flip it around and then cure the other side. Once that's cured, we want to seal in our silver glitter with our UV resin so that that silver color doesn't travel to any other portions of our door sign because if it does, it's going to look really sloppy. So you can pull off your guide tape and then pop it back under your UV light to cure. And since this is a wider section, you may have to angle it like I did before and cure it in two parts. Moving on to glitter, the yellow portion of the door sign, you have two options. You can either use UV resin or Mod Podge. This section is quite large and it does require a good bit of UV resin and UV resin can be kind of pricey. So if you're only making one or two door signs, this probably wouldn't be a bad option because it makes it go faster. However, if you're making a lot of door signs, um, this is not your best method, but I'm gonna show you both so that you can choose for whatever works best for you. As you can see, I put the UV resin on and I'm spreading it really good. And then with the glitter, I like to put the glitter on one half of the door sign and then tap off the excess and flip it around and glitter the other side. Once you have all the glitter on, you can tap off the excess again and then put it under your UV light. Since this is a wide section, I take two tumbler boxes to prop up the UV light and go ahead and cure one side and then I flip it around and cure the other side. And again, we're gonna go back in with our UV resin to seal in this yellow glitter so that nothing travels into this section of your door sign so that it looks nice and neat and professional. Once you have that spread, you can pull off your guide tape. If anything sticks, just grab an X-Acto knife and just peel off the portion that's stuck and then pop it under your UV light. Since I make so many door signs at one time, I don't want to use that much UV resin to apply the yellow glitter, so I use the Mod Podge method. So I just apply Mod Podge in this area and use a brush to spread it. Once the Mod Podge is spread, I use the same technique of glitter, applying half of it, tap off the excess, spin it around, and then glitter the other side. Once that's done, tap off your excess like before, and then go ahead and take a brush and just clean up any of these sections that didn't um, have yellow glitter if maybe some is left over on there. Once that's dry, you're going to want to seal in the yellow section just like you did with all the other sections so that your yellow doesn't travel to any of the other colors. Sealing in the sections of your glitter may seem like a tedious and unnecessary step, but this is going to ensure that your colors don't travel from one section to another when you apply your epoxy. Making a good quality product, paying attention to detail, and being very meticulous is going to allow you to charge more for your products because people know they're going to get a quality item. Moving on to the epoxy portion of the sign, I use Facet Turbo from CCDIY. These 12 inch door signs require 60 milliliters of epoxy total, 30 milliliters from part A and 30 milliliters from part B. It's the perfect amount to cover the whole sign with a nice coating of epoxy. It won't waste any and you won't need to make any additional epoxy to add to it. I use the turbo because it cures in about 30 minutes and then I'm able to work with my project. However, if this is the first time that you are spreading epoxy on a door sign, I would not use the turbo because it cures so fast and until you have a really good technique on how to spread it on the door sign, you may run out of time and it may start curing before you have it all spread. I've made hundreds of these and the best technique that I found for spreading the epoxy on the door sign is just pouring it straight in the middle, and then just taking the sign and doing like a tilt a world. I just let the epoxy slide as close to the edge as possible, and then just kind of rotate it around and then slide it all around to the edges as best as I can get without dripping over. Once you have it as close to the edges as possible, you're gonna take a silicone spatula and just smooth it over so that all your epoxy is from edge to edge all the way around the sign. Once you have your epoxy worked all the way around your sign and it looks fairly even, you're gonna to wanna to torch your epoxy so that you can get any bubbles out and it's going to lay nice and flat. As you can see from this close up, my epoxy goes all the way around the edges of my door sign. It's nice and flat, it's not bumpy. So once you have it looking smooth, you can set it to cure. I take a tumbler box and just place the door sign in the tumbler box, just in case you have any drippage that falls off the sign. You shouldn't have any drippage if you've been very careful about spreading your epoxy though. 
Once your door sign is cured, you can start applying your vinyl trim. I created these trim pieces with my Cricut machine. I like to start at the center with a piece of vinyl on the point of the zigzag and then just slide my finger up and I'll trim it with my X-Acto knife. One piece of trim should fit two pieces of the zigzag portion of the pencil if you've used the measurements that I showed you in this video. So go ahead and trim out all of your zigzag parts for the pencil. Now, when you get to the edges, you're gonna have two leftover spots that are very wide, but you don't have a point from the zigzag to put those trim pieces. So you're just gonna wanna estimate where that next section would go. You don't wanna leave those sections blank. It's too wide of a space to not have a piece of trim there. Once that's done, you can trim out the bottom portion of your zigzag. All you're gonna do is just line that brown zigzag portion with your trim. As you can see, everything looks nice and symmetrical and you can move on to trimming out your silver portion. You're just gonna take the same size strips and run along the top of the silver glitter and the bottom of the silver glitter. Cut off your excess and then you can do the black trim. It's the same thing. You're just lining it along the black portion and cutting off your excess. Now you can add your name to your sign. I use a permanent shiny black vinyl for the name. One of the main questions that I received about this door sign on my social media was, do I add a layer of epoxy over the vinyl on the door sign? And the answer to that is no. This is a door sign. It's not gonna be outside. It's not gonna be handled a lot. And I'm using permanent vinyl for the trim and for the name. So it's not necessary to add a layer of epoxy over the vinyl, unless you want to. But just remember that's gonna drive up the cost of your sign and your profit margin is going to lower. To hang the door sign, I use this pencil ribbon from Hobby Lobby and I use this pink tool from Michaels to embellish the door hanger just a little bit. I cut the ribbon at nine inches in length and then attach it to the back of the door sign. Locate the top center of your door sign and kind of have an idea of where it's going to be. Before you staple your ribbon in place, put the ribbon on there and place it with painter's tape first. Flip your door sign over and most likely it's going to be off center just like this one is. So you're gonna to have to flip it back over and kind of play with the ribbon um, back and forth so that it's centered and it will hang properly. Once you have it centered, you can go ahead and staple it in place with your staple gun. You are not gonna to wanna to use staples any bigger than 1 4th inch because it will go through the other side and mess up your epoxy. When I'm adding the tool, I use about 10 inches and then I just double it over and then triple it over one more time and cut the tool. Then I take about 18 inches and make a longer piece so that I can wrap it around the section that I just cut and then I'll be able to attach it onto the ribbon of the door hanger. Go ahead and attach it to the ribbon on the door hanger and then trim off each side of the tool so that it's even and fluff it up a little bit and you are all the way done. that's it for today i hope that tutorial helps if you're unsure about anything or if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and don't forget all the items that i use today in the tutorial are linked in the description as well as discount codes and affiliate links happy crafting